This snake has more human deaths to its name than any other species in the country. And somewhere deep in Texas hill country, I hope to come face to face with an absolute monster. All right, we've got a snake right there. It looks like it might be a rattler. That's a diamondback. It's so tiny. That's a little baby Western diamondback. This one's just a baby, but this is exactly why we're here. And seeing this one's a good sign there are more nearby. I'm hoping to get a really, really big one. And Jack says they're the most common rattlesnake out here. So it can't be that hard, right? Right? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm in Texas searching for iconic creatures of the American Southwest, particularly one very venomous snake. The Western Diamondback may well be the most famous or even infamous reptile in the United States. Closely associated with the arid habitats of Texas, this snake is responsible for more venomous snake-related deaths than any other species in the country. As the second largest rattlesnake in North America, this reptile is a true force to be reckoned with. And in my journey to uncover the secrets of the natural world, this is a monster I need to see face to face if I hope to one day brave the tropics of South America and Australia. With any luck, we'll track down a mammoth rattlesnake and hopefully, I'll be able to show you that even the snake with the most deaths to its name is really not out to get us. Man, it is hot, but the habitat here is so much fun. So many insects and weird things. I'm actually here with a buddy of mine right over here. Look who it is. Hey right, folks. Jack. I'm here in Texas with my buddy Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife. And speaking of wildlife, I just saw an old climb on this tree. There, it's up there. Never mind. He lied. There was nothing there. It's all a show. <laughs> oh, not Don't again. Give me with that branch. Yep. So, uh, what are we hoping to find out here today? Um, mostly wildlife. No, uh, no wild dead. No wild no, death. No wild dead. We're not really searching for minerals of any kind or uh, uh, radioactive materials. That's right. Or... FBI who watched this video, we're not looking for radioactive material or war criminals, or... I don't know, radioactive materials might be nice. Maybe, but we're mostly looking for wildlife. I'll tell you one thing, rattlesnakes don't make themselves easy to get to. You throw in the fact that they're like, also dangerously venomous, and then you see why adrenaline junkies like us wanna go after them. Welcome to Texas Hill Country. It doesn't look like the deserts of the Southwest, but don't be fooled. These forests and the rocky outcroppings they hide are rattlesnake territory. Somewhere in this expanse of habitat lurk huge venomous reptiles, true gems of the secret world all around us. These woods are rich with reptile life, and it wasn't long before we stumbled onto our first lakeless friend. Snake. Ah, uh, looks like a ribbon. Hold on. You burrow, I swear to God. Got him. Oh, he's, he's friendly. <laughs> Ow, that wasn't very nice. Oh, actually didn't hurt that bad, but let's, ah, look at that. He gave me a kiss. You're friendly. He wasn't too friendly or cooperative, but a bit deeper into the woods, Gage and Jack called out they found something. What you got? I got a Western milk snake for you. Yo. <laughs> no, wow, he's big. Yeah. He's medium, great too. Medium for this area. Yeah, Bigger than any of the juicy. milks I've seen. That's yeah. Go for it. Nice. Have a look at this little guy. That's a Western milk snake. And look at how pretty that coloration is. This would be a uh, Coral mimic out here, correct? For the most part, yeah. I mean, corals are super rare, so we don't expect to see a coral, but that is what this guy be mimicking out here. Tricolor pattern is aposomatic, and a lot of animals would see this and think, we're not gonna mess with that. These little guys are fossorial. They're living underneath rocks and logs in this area, and that's kind of great because it means it's another thing we can come across while we're flipping for a lot of our big invert targets. Sometimes you do come across really pretty, incredible reptiles just like this. And seeing the diversity like this, like a milk snake in some parts of their range can be kind of hard to find, a little bit particular on their environment. So uh, seeing a large diversity of lots of different animals in different taxonomic groups is promising for a lot of our more prominent and nightmarish targets. Now being a king snake, one of the craziest things about this little guy 
is that he's actually going to be immune or at least tolerant to viper venom. And one of the things we might be able to find out here is something that a milk snake this size probably couldn't take down even the babies, but a larger milk snake could be eating the babies of one of our really special targets, which are rattlesnakes. And timbers and western diamondbacks can both be found in this area. So seeing something like this might indicate that one of those larger crotalus could be nearby. So that is promising. We're gonna go ahead and let this little guy go and get back to hiking. As the day drew on, we saw a myriad of amazing creatures, but in terms of venomous snakes, came up empty-handed. As the sun sank beneath the trees, we knew we'd need to make a second trip. The One of the issues with this spot is that it's too perfect. And what I mean by that is there's not like one tiny nook where these animals like are still kind of clinging um, to like their historic habitat. Like all of this habitat is like perfect. So it's really hard to pinpoint exactly where the animals are gonna be and when they're going to be there um, because there's no telling, you know, in the miles and miles and miles of stretches of rock outcroppings and, and patches of flippable rocks and stuff like that, like where stuff is actually going to be. This habitat is so great because there's so much cover all around and these huge rocks are perfect, not just for denning snakes, but they're also great basking spots. These snakes are reptiles. They can't regulate their body temperature the same way that you or I do. For their metabolism to work, they need to absorb heat from the sun and they'll bask out on these rocks in the early morning. That's what we're hoping to get. But as the day gets later, these animals will occasionally leave one patch of cover to travel to another patch. And there's always the off chance that you can catch one of these snakes on the move. Right now we're kind of splitting up and scanning this rocky cliff. And we're using all of our senses. I'm like pausing here and there to listen. These snakes are crepuscular, so they're gonna be out any given time. We could be out on the crawl. I'm listening for like a large snake slithering through the leaves. We're also checking underneath, underneath rocks underneath little crevices and stuff, because one could be coiled up somewhere. It is hot, but you know, snakes have been out today, so it's not too hot for them to be out. It's just hot. We hiked throughout the day, checking every nook and cranny this habitat had to hide. Hunting for rattlesnakes in the daytime, especially in habitat as good as this, is entirely a lottery game. We had to cover as much ground as possible in the hopes that our paths would eventually cross with one of these giant deadly reptiles. All right, we just heard a big thing rustling. It was definitely a snake. It's somewhere on this ridge. Right, wait. Oh my gosh. There she is. Look at that. That's a huge timber rattlesnake. Oh, it's getting away. It's getting back into the hole. Oh. Look at that. I heard that rattle. Oh, hey. Look at this. That is a amazingly defensive snake. It's okay. Oh, look at that. That iconic S up. That defensive posture that has earned these animals their name as one of the most iconic American beauties. Have a look at you. You're unhappy. It never gets old seeing rattlesnakes, especially timber rattlesnakes. This is the first species of rattlesnake I ever got to properly work with. And this one is very, very upset that we've come into her territory. This is not the snake we're looking for, but this is extremely special. I always love seeing timber rattlesnakes in the wild. And what's crazy is we're looking for the snake that has the most human kills, but by and large, a bite from a timber is gonna be way worse. Especially in this part of the range, timber rattlesnakes have a neurotoxic and hemotoxic venom. So it's gonna attack your blood cells and your central nervous system. A bite from a timber rattlesnake will kill you a lot faster than a diamondback will. And this snake is uncharacteristically grumpy. Usually timbers are extremely chill, extremely placid snakes, but something about this snake, her attitude is not good. This snake is not happy. Now what's funny is timbers are a lot rarer in this part of the country than diamondbacks are. And we've found one of these before our target snake. You know, the diamondbacks are supposed to be common. Jack was assuring me they're gonna be an easy find, but at this point, all we've seen is that one little baby. I mean, I got my lifer, but I'm really hoping to get a nice big diamondback to get that proper desert rattler experience. So the day's getting short here, but we've got a little bit of time left here in Texas. I'm hoping, I'm holding out that our last day, we can get a big Aatrox.
With less than 24 hours before I fly back to North Carolina, we decided to give it one last go back at the spot we saw the baby earlier in the trip. If we were gonna find a rattlesnake, this would this would be a cool spot. I don't know if it would be the spot, but it would be a it'd be a cool spot. Jack, what do you think? I think it's likely. I mean, there's like lots of shade in the grass. It's a good spot for these to heat up. It's morning time, last day in Texas. It is, uh, I'm not worried yet, but we haven't had the best luck with Diamondbacks. If there was gonna be a spot, this would be a great spot. But I got skunked on Diamondbacks in Florida, so if, uh, if nothing comes of this, you know, it just means I gotta earn my stripes more. This terrain is rough. Uh, it is tough to traverse over these large, almost cliff-like hills. And with all the cacti around, I mean, the habitat looks perfect. It looks exactly like the kind of arid desert landscape that a Western Diamondback would be found in. But so far we've seen lots of grasshoppers, but other than that, no real signs of any interesting life. We're finally crossing over this one ridge and you can kind of feel the atmosphere shift. This part right here looks absolutely perfect. Plenty of grass, plenty of spotty shade, which means it's very brutal heat for us, but it's perfect at this part of late morning for a giant rattlesnake to be basking and getting ready to hunt for the day. And sure enough, as we descended down the ridge, I saw a huge snake disappear into the grass. Something big moving right over here. What are you? Oh, that's a rattler. That's a diamondback. Ooh, big one. He's not happy. Look at that. Yes, that's a big one. Yes, that's exactly what we're looking for here. Oh, this is the iconic, iconic rattlesnake of the American Southwest, the Western Diamondback. And have a look at that S pose right there. That is a famous, famous snake and a famous defensive posture. This is a snake you absolutely would not want to be bitten by, but as you can see right here, the last thing he wants to do is bite. That pose right there is a threat display. He's telling you, look, I mean business, and you mess with me, you're gonna get the business end of those fangs. And, uh, you know, we work with copperheads, cottonmouths, things that don't have a, an extremely toxic venom, but a rattlesnake not only has a very toxic venom, it has a lot of it. Look at those swollen venom glands. Believe me, there is more, more than enough venom in there to kill me 10 to 15 times over. But right there, that rattle. This snake is warning me, stay away, keep my distance. Right here, I'm safe. This snake can strike pretty far when he's in this pose. Because this right here, he can use his entire body as a springboard. But even just like five feet away from him, I am completely outside of his strike range and completely safe. But uh, this is a magnificent creature to find. Now this snake is not happy with us, but it's not angry, it's not mean. This snake is incredibly fearful. We've got Jack behind the camera right there and me right here, two very large humans. Huge heat sources that this animal knows are not prey and are definitely threats. He was hoping to use that camouflage, that patterning, to blend into the scrub grasses here and go undetected. But as soon as he got too close, he made a bolt for it. And uh, that's how we were able to find this snake. Now, that patterning right there is where it gets its name, the Western Diamondback. But believe it or not, in the, in the like bright sunlight, on the dark contrasting shade of all these grasses, this alternating dark light and tan patterning, all that speckled and like mottled, mottled color, this snake would blend right in, and it's perfect for their hunting strategy. These are incredible ambush predators. They'll sit there coiled up, kind of like this, only not rattling the tail, because that kind of gives them away. And believe it or not, a snake this size could probably actually take down a rabbit or a roadrunner, like large things you wouldn't think they'd be eating, but they can really, they can expand their throat and their body to really engulf something like that. And it's, what's funny is, now I wouldn't, I'm not gonna be attempting a bite from this snake, but what's interesting about snake bites is unlike a lizard or like a large insect, you don't feel like a pinch or a chomp. 
snakes actually don't really have much of a bite force because they sacrifice bite force and strong biting muscles for the ability to expand their throat to uh, take in prey much larger than their head. A snake bite from a non-venomous snake is actually going to feel more like a scratch. Now, a venomous snake has those fangs that are pumpy full of venom and would be excruciatingly painful, almost like a, most likely like a very, very severe sting or something. You would not want to be bitten by a venomous snake, but snake bites are interesting. They're not, they're not like a chomp, like you'd think. <sighs> that is so special. This is an absolute dream snake to find. I know it's not that rare in the areas where it lives, but if you don't live in the Southwest, this is something you dream about seeing if you're a reptile or even an animal lover in general. And uh, it is <clears throat> an absolute dream to be able to work with creatures like this. And uh, first of all, I got to thank Jack, come here, uh, for helping me get this incredible snake. I really, I know this is not a, a special animal for you, but I really appreciate it. It's these always are, a special time to come across these eight trucks, especially a good sized one like this. These I'm are, glad we could deliver for you. <laughs> these are incredible. These rattlesnakes are an absolute dream to see in the wild. And while they were definitely challenging to actually get a hold of, it was worth every step of the journey. Even after only one week in Texas, I feel like I'm no longer the person that I was when we first went out for Giant Widows. And I can also say that I now consider Jack to be among my best friends. Tracking down the Diamondback was surely an unforgettable adventure. But if you want to see one of the hardest rattlesnakes to track down, check out this video right here where I went after all three color phases and subspecies of the pygmy rattlesnake, which spanned over a year and a half of searching and across three different states. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.